What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the podcast live from Blue Wire Studios here at the Wynn Resort here in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's episode 737 of The O Show. We are powered by Osnap Active Lifestyle. Head on over to osnap.com slash Jack O'Hara to receive your packets today. I'm going to give you one here, Sir Brandon. What is it? Uh, so these are Osnap uh, Energy Packets. We have the Sleep one, Osnap Sleep. We have Osnap Reverse as well, Osnap Surge, which is our espresso flavor for energy. And then our uh, Vitamin D packet right here, Osnap. That's apple green flavor right there. Uh, snap it, squeeze it. Never snap alone either, Brandon. I, I uh, thought they were condoms. That's what I was no, Okay. Was that the first time that someone said that? I think that is the first time anyone's All ever right, said sorry. that. Sorry. Oh, snap. Okay. It kind of okay. sounds like that. Like, oh, snap. It's okay. Maybe oh, maybe snap. you break one out and then you're like, oh, no, it's just liquid. <laughs> you know, it's just oh, snap. But head on over to osnap.com, oh, cool. guys, uh, slash Jack O'Hara to receive your packets today. Brandon, better known as uh, DJ Bonix yeah, in man. the studio today. I feel underdressed. Oh, I feel overdressed. You got the nice jacket on. I, I had a few different outfits lined up. I had my camo bomber jacket. I ended up going with the suit jacket today. I steamed this today. That's how... Much you you look like that's a DJ. A, that's how much I cared. You look like a DJ. And on like two days notice, you What's reached that? out. You're like, yeah, what time? Yeah, I'll be there. And I'm like, okay, let's see if, if Bonnick shows up. And here, here you are. I'm here for you, buddy. I appreciate I'm you so for you. much. You're you. um, the what, head of partnerships and strategic uh, partnerships. Strategic partnerships at Hardeen, at Hardeen. Uh, currently. Uh, DJ for Wiz Khalifa. Do some radio here and there. And uh, I also DJ myself. So. so nothing much. I got a couple things going on. So nothing much. Not bad for 40 plus guy you're going to europe tomorrow going to europe tomorrow so you slid me in right before your big trip that's right you know I, we actually had a show today but i was like no i had to i had to do this one first so i told wiz and them that this comes first. you told wiz uh this kid uh asked me to go on his rinky dink podcast <laughs> it's at the win so it must yeah mean i mean something. you know it's nice it's nice in here man congratulations thank you very congratulations much. to you man I'm a nice guy, so people cool put up on. with me. Yeah, no, you're from Jersey, so you're... I know you're from Philly, East yeah. Coast people. East Coast guys over here. We're we're East very Coast mean guys. to the rest of the crowd over here. Big crowd. There's nobody over there. <laughs> I'm just saying, on the West Coast, like oh. I come off as the mean. No, guy, I know. Sometimes like, no, I yeah, sometimes I, I become uh, pretty assertive, I like to say, and direct, as, especially as I get older. And then sometimes I'm like, man, do people think I'm getting? Uh, being more of a dick, can I say that? Yeah. Yeah. You can okay. say whatever you want. Okay, cool. Whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. so sometimes I feel like I'm getting older and grumpier, but also at the same time, you know what you want when you're older a little bit. Mm -hmm. you know? Oh, yeah. You're very intentional. I that's think the so. one yeah, thing. That, that's I, the word. I'm logical and I'm intentional right. with what I'm doing. Like, I don't mean to hurt people with my words when I tell the truth, but I right. tell it like it is sometimes. Right. right. And people are like, you're so mean. It's like, I'm pretty sweet. If, you know, right. Let's go back to Boston. But there's a lot of years of people pleasing, though, too. So that's why I think it's different because, like, when you're in your people pleasing era or whatever, like people are so used to you being like, oh, and then now you're like, nah, I'm good. And they're like, you've changed. And you're like, well, that's it's okay. like the difference between like a first date and being married for 20 years. And then you're just like, you just yeah, your real you're self. just farting at the end of mm -hmm. the 20 years all the time mm -hmm. in front of your partner. That's right. It's, it's normal. <laughs> 14 missed calls. You never answer the calls anymore. <laughs> that's usually how it goes, though. But we're both very thankfully that we're. In those positions where we just be ourselves, no, I'm thankful. I don't have to please anybody. I'm thankful I'm here. Thank yeah, man. You. Yeah. And you're going to Europe tomorrow with Wiz, going which is a with... big deal. Yeah, we haven't been to Europe since um, before the C word uh, years. Yeah. And um, so it's cool to go back and just kind of like I was telling you a little bit ago, just like as I get older and wiser and more awareness, it's you know you go to these countries and you're just way more grateful than you were when you're just like young and like I'm gonna get fucked up Ooh. and now you're like well you experience these big cities for the first time you guys are probably <clears throat> being taken care of pretty well right, especially right. the bigger the artist right, the more you're right. probably getting taken care of right. and you just get to do whatever there's well, really like, no I, rules as a DJ like and it was like you know over a decade ago when those first adventures started it was cool because like I was I guess I you know I had some clout as a DJ at the time and to go into a country and be like, you know, at the time it would be like Twitter or you reach out to someone and be like, hey, who's the DJ in Frankfurt? And then they would connect you with a dude who was the man, you know, DJs are the, the dudes in their community. So then you literally get like a, you, you jump right into the community and you, you're you walking around with a DJ that everyone knows. That's why I'm saying the DJ got really got the keys of the city. You walk around, you, you know, everyone knows a dude. Um, oh yeah, I gotta be careful what I say with it. Because out, outside, that's right. That's right. You Ooh, might have sorry. one person that disagrees sorry. with you, and it could start a fire. The host across the a way. Wildfire. I'll keep it clean, though. Um, so, uh, yeah, so just going back to Europe and, and having – because as an American, you're going there, 
as a hip hop artist and hip hop truly is from America. So when you're Wiz Khalifa's DJ and you kind of have, you know, some buzz as a DJ and you go to these cities and you can book after parties, it's really cool, man. You just jump right into culture. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, and I think that originates from like, you know, doing my time wherever cities that I'm in and being, you know, just being good, you know, doing as much as I can within the DJ community. And then I think, uh, you know, that pays dividends. Oh, my God, it's for cool. sure. Yeah. And it's like not only that, like you get to help out kind of not critique, but like mold certain people that are coming up and you're like, you got a lot of talent. Like, let me take you under your wing almost. Right. And then you also because when you started with Wiz, he wasn't Wiz Khalifa yet. Right. He was still kind of, you know, successful, but not like. I think like 2010, 2011, 2012 yeah, no, is when he hit like Yeah, 2010 big he hit, but I I started about 2010, but I knew him like years before that as like a kid recording at uh you know at the studio at my friend's studio. Uh I was kind of on in Pittsburgh, so I was on the radio doing my thing. So I was just doing my diligence of being a supporter of of the local community and I I stress that C word, which is culture, man, like being a part of the culture in whatever you do and being a fan of it, I think, again, pays dividends in the long term. I, I tweeted something recently that was just like, you know, paying respects to the craft and the culture around you. Um, and I think that's super important for longevity, you know. Building relationships. I was talking to uh, Sean, who was in here before, talking about communication first right. and foremost. Right. Giving back to those who, not even giving back to those necessarily <clears throat> that, put in the effort with you and gave you opportunities, but right. pay it forward to those coming up. Definitely. And, and I think though, what's important, cause like I like to say, and it is definitely building relationships cause people will be like network, network. And I always say, uh, you know, networking is for robots and building relationships is, is, is for yeah. humans, you know? Uh, and I think that's super important, but I think what's really important is being undeniable at what you do. Um, that's important. And, because I just think there's a lot of people that buy the mic and buy the camera and buy the DJ equipment. And they're like, Hey, I'm a DJ. I'm a podcast guy. I'm a, you know, I'm a photographer. So I think it's so easy now that you really have to be undeniable. That's the word that I like to use is like be undeniable at what you do. You know, like how do you differentiate yourself then as a DJ? Like I'm sure you took bits and pieces of people that you watched growing up and listened right. to, but at the same time, it's like repetition, 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 and until you find that little thing that you do that nobody else does. Right. I mean, you know, for me in Pittsburgh, it was the it was I like to they call it like a three sixty deal, like it, when when you know artists get signed. Uh, but it was like three sixty for me. I was active in my local music community, and I was a fan. I also was on the radio and put in my time there, and I. Um, and I also was good at it too. So I couldn't really tell you. I just think it was like the, you couldn't ignore me. And I, what I like to call it is like, you really have to give your city a hug uh, if you really want to take that over. You know, some people can go from like, hey, I'm really good and everyone comes to me. But I think, you know, I've lived in, you know, at least five different cities, a part of the radio. And one of my main plays in each of those cities was I need to get, I need to be a supporter of the local scene, you know? You have to come in there as a fan and a supporter versus just like, hey, look who I am. I want, I need all your eyes on me. And uh, I don't think that, you know, and the, for me, I, I don't know what I, what I did differently is just care. Uh, and I really, I, I don't, I don't, I like to say like I had my superstar era and now I just want to be a part of the galaxy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like less superstar, more galaxy over here. You care too much. It's your biggest flaw. Well, I mean, kind of, because, you know, I'll slow down and be emotional or, um, yeah, but I do care, man. Like I've probably mentored a way more me more people than I probably should, I yeah. guess, to a degree. Because you probably have a few where you're like, oh, I wish I didn't put in the time because he, he obviously didn't run with it or she didn't well, run with it. You know, it sometimes I wish I would have went all the way in certain aspects, but, I, you know, I, I, I watch what I say in that because... I'm just happy to be here, man. You know, going to Europe, we, we got a Wiz and Snoop tour all summer, two months on the road, and then we're going to Australia in September. We've been done that. We've been toured with Snoop. We've been to Australia before, but again, everything's different after COVID years for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be a different perspective. You were talking about before we went on, like visiting a place you've already been, but like a few years later, this years is four later, or five years later, you're a different person. Right. You've had different experiences. It's going to be a different time. Totally. You're setting the expectation. I'm going to have a good time. We've done this before too, so it's right. like there's no pressure. Right. 
but just to see him him evolve too as well and you know he's not drinking at the moment he's doing a lot of mushrooms um it's, you know weed still the coolest thing about Wiz, I think he did an interview with ESPN. This was almost like 10 years ago. And they were giving him crap for being too skinny. He's like, what? You think I'm too skinny? And he came back like the next yeah. year on the same show, like 20, <laughs> 20 pounds of muscle added to him. Like, yeah. wow, you really put in the work. I mean, watching a stoner do that, and you know, he's definitely inspired, I know people personally who went from slobs to working out every day and just seeing that, you know, uh, is, is inspiring. He brings a damn gym with him on tour this summer. And uh, the last tour we did, I got to work out with him a couple days, and the next day I was destroyed. <laughs> he had me he had me destroyed. But, you know, just seeing a guy like that who doesn't have to do any of that, he could just be rich and make music and eat off that. But this guy wakes up every morning, he works out, he's a great dad, he's putting music out there, and he really just teaches. He's ta taught me a lot of just pushing forward and not, dwelling or slowing down and i mean can you imagine being a celebrity like him and so many people being critical about you know where he's been his music what type of decisions he makes etc so just to see him still not lose it because people lose it you know when they get that deep in the game especially when they're putting in as much work as he's because he's hustling all year round he's running 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 and he doesn't necessarily have to those fast and furious tracks those early songs they came with those first yep. two albums. I mean, just the the you whole. You live off of those forever. Yeah, definitely. See you again, and then the other uh, we own it. He did with two chains, but just even seeing the cannabis part take uh, an effect. Imagine what there's 23 legal states, ish, and so every state that comes out, it's like imagine like Michael Jordan shoe being released in every one of those states. You know, when it becomes yeah. legal, like Khalifa is gonna go and. People are gonna want to smoke that. So mm -hmm. so cool. And even to know that like he was arrested for that, and 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 in Pennsylvania specifically, at the end of last year, he launched his Khalifa Kush. And like, man, I remember when he running from the law. And now, I mean, that's that's the mold. Like that's the blueprint. Man, yeah. is this guy has a strand. Of he has weed the story behind and it. the story behind it, and it's just like a kid. He did. He, he, he did it, man, and I'm, I'm happy to be a part of that machine. You know? So what are the states that are still um, illegal? Probably, like, Atlanta and, like, like some like of those South. Bible, yeah, Bible yeah. Belt, South-type Alabama, states. Arkansas. Yeah, I know Min uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota just went legal, so that's cool, too. Really? Yeah, which is crazy how, like, um, it's still, like, I was just reading a story this week about how Twitch is, like, not allowing marijuana partners, like, you can't twitch with that but you can but you can have alcohol partners which is so crazy to me well so crazy. and i'm a big believer and there's tests that show it cannabis way safer than alcohol i mean one thousand percent i just you know i just think that it's a great tool that will make people at ease and i don't think they want us at ease you know they want us at each other's throats Oh, negativity reigns supreme. Doesn't I mean, matter. Yeah, exactly. Spreads way faster than positivity. Exactly. Positivity spreads at snail speed. Compared we need to more of it though, which is actually insane. And you know, I've um, started to feel that way a little bit about like, listen, I like music, I like ratchet music, but sometimes I'm kind of like, am I adding to this a little bit? Like the, you know, when they were in the '60s, '70s, it was love songs. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was love songs. And I'm not saying, you know, there's a time for a place like, I want to party, I want to hear something crazy and ratchet, cool. But I'm just thinking, like, the overall, the overall, like, feeling of that. I, I would say, like, some of it is very low low vibrational. So I'm, I'm kind of currently at least observing about it right now, mm -hmm. you know? Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's an interesting subject. I, to me... Like I told you, I'm very logical right. when it comes to my thinking. I'm mm -hmm. like, well, the information's out there about it. It seems okay. Right. I don't understand why it's such a big deal. Right. I understand going from being illegal to legal. Right. Everybody's going to have their arms up in the air. I, right. Out west, obviously out here in Arizona and California, Christianity reigns supreme. Right. And they're probably anti-cannabis as well. Arizona was like, when we used to tour early in the early 2010s, before going to the Southwest, we would always have to be like, we got to clean the bus. No weed on the bus. Get the smell out. Yeah, uh, get the smell out. And now it's legal in Arizona, too. So, mm -hmm. and Albuquerque. Yeah. 
Wow. That's good, though. I mean, it's creating jobs. It's chilling, well, it people, it's chilling people out. G- gave you a job. It gave me a job. Out of strategic partnerships. Yeah, you can yeah. partner with businesses yeah. and you know, help each other out, provide value there. Well, no, what's cool is that it's, it, uh, this Hardeen position that I'm in is kind of, I, I've been saying this lately, too, is one of my catchy phrases going from cater to to caterer. Uh, and I think that's a part of just getting older and, yeah. and being uh, aged in whatever you do is that now I'm able to help my peers, help younger people through partnerships, uh, I work with some of the best DJs in the whole world. Uh, and so, you know, the Khalifa, DJing with Khalifa, I'm definitely a connoisseur in cannabis and, uh, or, you know, a person that you... How could you not be? Yeah, right? yeah. I mean... You need, you need to vibe and you need to gel with your team. Well, I don't drink that much. I do a little drinking here and there, but like, I don't know. I think just herb just does it for me, man. Mm-hmm. That's Thank all you me. need. You, you find your one thing, you're like, I, I can. I mean, I this. probably like if I was to, I probably could, probably could do things <laughs> with my time and that in in other aspects. But honestly, like I used to smoke cigarettes, and and, and so it feels it's different, man. It's different. Yeah, it's different. you you mature. Do you, do you smoke? Uh cannabis, yes. Yeah, cannabis for sure. Just because there's certain things like cannabis cocktails, I absolutely love. Okay, there's a few different brands, uh, Calvara that okay. you guys sell at Pardeen. Okay, very good. Uh, with partnered with Miguel, right? Um, th- th- there's a few things that like I've never done a blunt before. I right. think they just but you smoke the crap papers or you just do drinks? Just drinks. Oh, okay. So right you never now. actually smoked it? No. Oh, okay. I feel like I mean I guess it gives you a different effect. I don't know. That's but cool. I've fallen in love with the cocktails for right, sure. Right. Right. No, it's cool, man. It's chill. Like I like Can. You know, Can. That's a, a cool brand that I like. Right. They have the sips, which is cool. Uh, but edibles and stuff scary a little bit. So edibles yeah, is man. the one that scares you. Yeah. I feel like I'd be more optimistic when it comes to edibles than it is the the blunts. Yeah, uh, maybe it just depends because some people are like really turned off by smoking, which I understand. Yeah, so. you were at your youth smoking cigarettes, but you matured now. Yeah, I now, think you're, so. now you're well. Yeah, I had like a health scare, so that was it. it was e- you know I don't want to say it was easy, but when you have a health scare, it kind of helps you uh, shape up. Yeah, for sure. Shape up a little. So, bit. what is it like specifically with your job at Hardeen? Uh, again, the it's, difficulties, the successes. Oh, oh the... Um, I mean, first of all, moving to Vegas was a curve because I would never choose to live in Vegas before living here. It's like no way because it's like how could I? It's too crazy. Uh, but it's not actually. It's I mean, it's crazy. It's as crazy as you want it, which I like. Um, but Hardeen was really helpful because during COVID, I was living in Minneapolis. Um, the station sold. There was crazy riots in Minneapolis. You know, it was a weird time. And uh, Adam, who's the owner there, he I, I was an ambassador for them first. So, you know, basically I would go around repping the brand, taking pictures, and and that was easy because I was with Khalifa everywhere. And Khalifa's big, obviously, in the weed community. And then uh, I just knew. I told him when I first met I was like, man, first of all, he's from Pittsburgh, so that was something that we had in common. And I was like, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work for you one day. I don't know what that is. And then here comes after pre, you know, post COVID, I went through a failed relationship and tried to move to another state and da, 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 da. And, uh, I just took a chance, man. And that's the one thing about moving is that it really tests you. And this is like, again, this is probably my fourth, fifth city that I, I've been in. And now coming up here in a few weeks, is going to be two years in Las Vegas, which is crazy. Cause I get to DJ. I like to call it a hobby. I get to DJ as a hobby and play all these cool places. Cause I'm pretty good at that. And then Hardeen's interesting because a lot of people there and people will always be like, you, you don't have to do this. You know, you could just be DJing. And I'm like, you know, when you get older and you put 25 years into something, I just want different feelings. I want to experience new, new things. And so that's kind of where it's this not is about having me. to do things. It's about wanting to do things, exactly. people. Right. Exactly. Like you want to pursue your passions at the end of the day, travel a little bit. You're going to Europe tomorrow. Not right. everybody gets to do that. Right. I'm, pre- I'm pretty lucky. And, you know, it, it, it has benefits, which is helpful for me. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, salary and all that. So it's, it's cool. Like, like you're taking care of financially. That's why they're like, you don't have to do that, Brandon. Right. But it's like, I want to do but it. But I want to do it because uh, when the the funds were getting low during COVID, I was like, oh man, I gotta have more money saved. Mm-hmm. So, nah, it was it, it's been really it's been really cool, especially because I'm meeting all sorts of people, all walks of life. I mean, my Instagram went up ten thousand. I feel like ten thousand people in the last uh, 
Like it's amazing how years. you connect with so many people. Yeah. Like I'm 24. I think we just surpassed 13,000 followers, which isn't a big deal, but it's like way more people than I figure. Uh, it's awesome, follow man. You, me, you know, like it's like, it's interesting how many people will follow you overnight. And you're like, oh, wow. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. Well, what you're building is the undeniable part. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's not overnight. And I can appreciate that. Like, truthfully, I didn't know much about the podcast, so I went to check it out. I didn't expect you And to. looked, and I was like, oh, like, he does. it's not nothing, but it's also not like Mike Tyson, but the consistency, the look, and I think that's, like, what you're building right now. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, you know, because I think sometimes people have podcasts, and sometimes I'm like, oh, yeah, here's a podcast that is going to use our, 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 you know, followers to big, there's a, there's a lot of that happening. Uh, but you know, like, so you're the DJ for Wiz Khalifa, right. and not that I'm like that. super popular pop, and you're gonna get all these followers from this. But I've built enough, um, you know, history in this game for people to be like, hey, if Bonix trusts this brand, then you know we'll ch- go go check it out. So mm-hmm. congrats to you, man. You know, oh, you're thank you very much being 24, and to have you know to wear the suit like that and, and look good behind this table, you know, it's, it's not an easy thing, especially with, you know, what I think I heard something recently. There's like 2 million new podcasts. Like, you know, it's, it's yeah, the it's average crazy. episode or the average podcast lasts seven episodes too, yeah. which tells you how many people just fizzle out of it. And you're at like 700. Is that yeah. 737. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like getting my feet back into the podcasting thing. Uh, I was on the radio every day places, so it's just I was so used to just being out there, but yeah. being removed from that and putting yourself out there is, you know, it's uh, it's not. You can say whatever you want. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about weed for like the and they could hear us out there I too, know. right? And now they're stopping, you know, controversy. <laughs> uh, but like for you, I'm like, oh, he's partnered with Hardini. Probably know Spencer. Here we are talking Facetime uh, yep, Spencer yep. before we went. Spencer is like my uh, first and pro- oh, not my only, but my first porn star friend. Really, me too. Honestly, yeah. And like to be able to ask a dude like questions, you know, just like, yeah, it's fun, right? <laughs> There's a mom with his kid out there, so I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be rated G over here. But this, you might not be invited back. Yeah, I, I might not. Be it's invited all right. Back. It's okay. Is we'll it? Uh, yeah. It's, it's the win, man. It's nice in here. No, but like you being partnered with Hardeen, I'm like, oh, he's a DJ, which is cool in of itself, right. you know, like. You, you have the stories, I'm sure. Like, right. I didn't even have to go too deep into it. I'm like, oh, he's probably got a great right. life. I got, a, I got a lot. I actually so. recently been organizing all my hard drives and getting all my pictures together, and I'm about to just repost a lot of the stuff that I've done uh, in the last... Dude, I've been DJing for 25 years. So, I mean, I have interviews with Justin Bieber. I, you know, when I did radio, I have interviews with all these cats. Some of them, like, no one's ever seen the interview with Justin Bieber. I'm kind of waiting until, like, some Bieber scandal comes out. How many out. years ago was it? It was. And is it evergreen content? I mean, yeah, because he looks he's perfect. He looks like I mean, he's probably like thirteen in it. Which so is this great. is like a decade. Yeah, this, this is decade, decade ago. plus. And it's wild because when I look at myself, and maybe people think I'm corny now, but when I look at old footage and pictures, I'm like, do you look back at old pictures of yourself and you're like, sometimes, I'm like, what was I thinking? What, oh, dude, what, two what? years ago, I had like this faux hawk thing where it was completely shaved all around, but my hair was like up to here. But then and you I were like, it up. this is amazing. And then when you look back at it now, you're like, like all my friends were like, right. Yeah, this yeah, is terrible. Yeah, no. When I look back at myself, I was like, maybe I, I've cornied my way <laughs> to this point. Uh, but maybe I'll look at myself 20 years from now and be like, man, what was he doing? Mm-hmm. No, I don't think you would. At this point, they're all experiences. Yeah. You no. look back and I'm like, that, that picture has a story. If I go back in my phone right now, and pick out a random picture. I could probably tell you what I was doing that day, like who I was with, what we were doing, the setting, the, everything. It's amazing. I, I always, I forget that I had a different journey as a DJ. Like, you know, a lot of DJs are basically blue collar. You know, they go to the club, they DJ, and like I've had radio, I've got to tour with a big artist, and uh, I've competed in DJ competitions. And so, yeah, you know, still doing it. Yeah, still doing it. Uh, who else besides Bieber have you had on? Because interviewing big names like that is could be intimidating. Not in the sense of like, oh, I'm nervous <clears> to meet them, but they've been asked a billion different questions. Like, right. they're probably not going to ask something, or at least that's your mindset going in. Like, right. I really got to think. I mean, of something. I've interviewed a lot of people from you know, like Lady Gaga, but this was like younger. So radio was different then. There were actually like some tasteless jokes in the but Justin mm-hmm. Bieber interview. That if I were to put it out, I'd have to like, 
it's a the, different era. Well, a different like, era. Like, up. you know, in that 2000s, it was like Stern and all that was the cool thing. So you were trying to be as wacky as possible. But, you know, sometimes you just come off as douchey. I mean, when Stern did it, I mean, Stern came off as douchey. Too. Right. Still does sometimes, but like he was the originator. Right, right. But that's a, but that's what it was. Like shock radio and like um but the only guy that's been able to replicate Stern in some aspect when it comes to the raunchiness is Dave Portnoy and what he built with Barstool Sports. Right. But that's kind of like in its weird, It's in its own it's, thing. It's in its too. weird time now that he doesn't own it and all that. I don't think it's as uh, hot as it was like five, six years right. ago. But you know, stick and move, stick and move. But, but they're, they're all wealthier. They, I mean, they're, they're all paid off for the guys who started oh, it. Oh, yeah. And they, I think Cad and there's KFC a bunch of barstool guys. type. That's like a culture. That's like a type of dude. My uh, friend's like, yeah, my brother's like a barstool dude. And I know exactly stoolies, what that means. what they call Oh, they call right? them stoolies? stoolies? Okay. Yeah. It's like a fraternity. Yeah. I mean, you know, drink beer, play golf, sports, America probably. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, it's a certain vibe for yeah. sure. This is cool, whatever. Man. Not too many, like, I'd say respectful people in that community. I wouldn't, it, I wouldn't certain, go as far. Certain vibe, maybe. It's a certain vibe, like it. It turns off a lot of people, I think, especially the older generation. I think so, but there, I, I, you know, there's always fifty-fifty, man. For someone who hates something, that yeah. there's like, you know, there's definitely like, like the like, newer generation. That's who their target audience is for sure. I've interviewed people who are, were in traditional broadcast. 30, 40 years, you'd be like, oh, you're not with one of those outlets like Barstool Sports, right. are you? Because they wouldn't take an interview with someone like that. We're like celebrities now, like, oh, I want to do the Caleb Presley interview, the Sunday morning conversation, right. whatever it is. Because right. it's fun. It's different. Right. It's not a normal sit-down interview. Right. But they have, like, uh, what's his name? Like, Joe Budden and them now are a part of the, like, Barstool really? realm. I think that they own. That's like, interesting. Yeah, I think they, like, own them. So, But it gets tight because, like, that's the problem with, you know, the cancel culture and all that is like you align with this person, this person did that, and that's just not that's not it, man. That's too no. extreme. No, not at all. I'm sure you've done some bad things in your life, right? No. I'm crystal clear. You're... <laughs> I am pristine. Not as if they you lived come. in Arizona, man. Suburbs of New Jersey, man. It gets freaky. That's in where Arizona. I grew up. It gets freaky in Arizona. Certain parts. North Scottsdale, beautiful. North Phoenix, completely different story. Jersey's wild too. In like, I'm trying to think, Camden, New Jersey, that's a tough area. Camden. I grew up in Morristown. Morristown. They have the Morristown Mall there? They, I think so. I don't know. I, I never went if they do. No. Okay. Fashion, yeah, you're young, though. Fashion but... Square, I know that. Fashion Square. In Scottsdale. And then, of course, <laughs> the gajillion malls that they have here in Vegas. So compared to every city growing up in Philly, what do you think of Vegas? I mean, I think it's cool. You know, any person that I met f- actually like from here, and we're talking like generations from here, they're really like cool, interesting people, man, and uh, and they're like really special people. It's, it's it's odd because I just think if you grew up around here, you'd it'd be weird. But uh, it's different, man. Just being on the West Coast. So I lived in three West Coast cities. I lived in LA for about a year. I lived in Portland only for a few months, and then you know this is probably my longest stint. Uh, I've lived in Minneapolis, Philly, Pittsburgh, and a little stint in Austin, Texas. So I've been around. But Vegas is cool because. At my age, see, I don't have a family. I don't have kids or nothing like that. There's people always visiting, so you're always being a, a host. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm Filipino, too, so there's hella Filipino food here, and a lot of Filipinos love to come here, so my family likes to come out here or I have relatives come out here. Uh, but it's cool. But what's also cool is that as you start to see the other side of it, and you start to, like, see that some of it's smoke and mirrors. Like, if I say I DJ in Vegas, like, of course, to everyone outside of Vegas, like, oh, my God, that's cool. But then when you're, like, dealing with the local politics of DJing and the, you know, you're just like, wow, this is like everywhere else, mm-hmm. you know? Oh, you, you adapt. You learn. You adapt. I mean, you just have to play the cards, man. It's not always one rule across the board. Yeah, you, you, no. you definitely have to adapt. I mean, certain, like, Boston, New York, there's a certain style. And if right. you don't adapt, you're just not going to fit in. Well, you know, I, I'd like to experience living in New York one day, but I also don't want to struggle to do that Mm -hmm. and that's the one thing about living i've i've kind of lived people someone said this like you know you've lived in these small ponds and you're a big fish in them and uh, i kind of like that though vegas minneapolis portland like those cities are cool because those cities need love too and um not as much pressure i guess so i mean listen you still have to be good uh but you just really like living in minneapolis one of my favorite cities of my you know my whole life like so prince was always they always talked about how he never moved out of 
you know, Minnesota. And this guy was like, you know, one of the biggest artists, if not the biggest artist in the world at one point. And I understand that now because there's just something about a community that's accessible. And I think when you're in like these huge cities, you know, it's just a lot. It's a lot going on. So, you know, the music scene in Minneapolis was really cool. Getting to know some of the artists there. I don't know if you're familiar with like Atmosphere. Uh, you know, he is another god from that area. So just kind of seeing all this stuff. I've been really lucky and, and, and I'm starting to see patterns in my life. I think when you're older, you start to see <clears throat> these patterns of like, damn, I really get to experience all these different communities and different people. And that's kind of why this job is great because everyone at least once a year will go to Vegas. And so now anyone who's kind of come across whatever I do, you know, they are like, oh shit, you're in Vegas and I'm going to come visit you. I'm going to come visit the shop. I'm going to come see you DJ. So, you know, that, that uh, can be overwhelming sometimes, but it's a part of the job, you know, being an ambassador and trying to get people to the shop. Yeah. But when you get people here, there's so many cool things to do. Like, well, what's the most difficult or the most difficult partnership that you tried to align with Hardeen? Um, you know, it's a, it's totally ever changing, and it's because people want money. Well, that's what it comes down to, yeah, you know. And they want Are we both making money. And the and it goes back to what we were saying is just because someone does it doesn't mean you're doing it. And so someone's like, "Oh, I'm having this party." And I need, you know, $10,000 for this. And I'm just like, just because you're doing it doesn't mean that it makes sense for us. So some, uh, you know, we're trying to get into this boxing arena a little bit. We had some luck with a Gervonta Davis's camp. We were able to sponsor the coaches. And so that was a good look. So we're trying to get into those spaces. But we're just one dispensary. We're not Walmart. We're not McDonald's. And so, you know, sometimes because people see our brand so much, they think, um, that were like, you know, some, we had someone recently come up to us, was like, yeah, hey, you want to sponsor this? It's a, they're like, we'll give you a half off of a million. It's $500,000. And I was like, yo, we're, we're just one dispensary in Vegas. We're not, you know, I'm glad that they look at us in that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, hopefully we're, we're really trying to scale that brand, Hardeen, um, which is really cool. Uh, we silently launched a radio channel on Dash Radio that you can access. But right now we're just kind of like getting all the bells and whistles, right, figuring, figuring out the programming. But you can access it if you go to dashradio.com, you search Hardeen. Uh, and, you know, it's just about, I'm really learning about branding, man, and, and that it's not overnight thing. And then when you actually have something that, it, it, when, that you trust that is undeniable, like I said to you before, that's when things kind of happen. And so... Um, yeah, so it's just great. Hardeen's in its sixth year, going on seven, and it's been great. Like, even just this year alone, we've had Anderson Pack stop by. We had Ice-T uh, come by um, from SVU, if people yeah, don't know he's course. a rapper. of course. Uh, we've recently had DJ Jazzy Jeff, who was one of my heroes, uh, and it's cool. It's just, it's constantly like a revolving door, and the business is growing, and it's kind of odd, though, because in the last year, as a business uh, the marijuana business, the cannabis business, I should say, has kind of, uh, you know, with the recession and it was kind of, a, it, I'll be honest, like, and I really wasn't here for that, but COVID was really good for Hardeen because we stepped up our delivery and all that. Mm -hmm. um, but now with the amount of dispensaries and the market's kind of down, so, but I think that's just, you know, that's just how, that's business. But you talk about the revolving door, too. It's like, that's a cool business to be a part of. You, you don't know who's walking through that door. Right. Well, exactly. I mean, it could be porn stars. You know, I've because I, of, I interviewed Lisa Ann at the yeah. at Hardeen Studios, yes, you the did. podcast studio. That you and like, I'm not really big in the porn. Uh, like, I don't know much about all the players and stuff. But, you know, with Spencer bringing in an AVN here, we had a bunch of porn stars come in and visit the dispensary. And man, just watching the different types of people that come to the dispensary like in the morning you can guarantee it is like senior citizens that come in uh we give a discount to like all of uh veterans they get a better discount than employees um you know all the veterans or, or whatever so just watching it really is cool like because i actually got a crash course in cannabis by touring with one of the top five cannabis guys of all time you know i mean in his generation rightfully so snoop dogg Wiz khalifa so for 10 years, like at least for the first 
few years, we were ducking and dodging, you know, watching Wiz and the homies get arrested, um, sneaking cannabis into different countries and, and whatever and, and being caught in some of them. So I had, like, it's funny because uh, people will be like, oh, we know Hardeen and uh, yeah, I'm the director of partnerships. Oh, that's cool. And then I'll be like, yeah, I DJ for Wiz Khalifa for 15 years and then, you know, their eyes perk up and I'm like, that's a, such a unique role that falls under the cannabis industry because Wiz is one of the top brands in Canada. They go hand in hand. It goes hand in hand. And so, you know, I could be doing something completely and still make it work with DJing, but having, you know, radio, cannabis, and uh, DJing for Wiz Khalifa has just been a great ingredient. Oh, yeah, man. Well, you're killing it. Thank you. Good luck tomorrow on that flight. Thank you. It'll be good. Easy I just got, I got my Switch and Zelda, so it'll be good. Perfect. What yeah. do you play? I've been playing this new Zelda, nice. So which has been pretty good. And uh, I got a new laptop, so I'll be organizing that. But I'm excited to just – that. that's the one thing I love is that, you know, you could interview me as a DJ and be like, hey, you've done all these cool stuff. But, like, I actually – when you zoom out of it, I like being – I like being a guy that's just a part of the machine sometimes. You know, I don't always have to be the main character. Like, hey, I help Wiz, I'm behind him, and I, you know, make sure that he's good and, and I support him. So it's, uh, I like being a part of the machine. And then sometimes I'll play the host role and sometimes I'll play the main character. So it's cool to, you don't always have to be the main character. That's a, right. that's a good piece of advice. Be a building block. I mean, you know, some of the best characters in movies and books are the not the main character. And you're like, I like, that's my favorite character. So, mm -hmm. uh, and that guy has his main character moments in his own life or if they, you know, write their own story about it. But I, you know, the one thing that is, that still is helping me today is watching how a community it really takes a village and community is is the way to kind of get what you want man you know like you're building your own community right you're having all these people come by and kind of get to know your brand and then i'm sure you have some super fans that watch your stuff um and that's all you got to do is keep building that community you know right well you're the uh, the main character in your own life brandon DJ Bonics. Why, thank you. Where thank can you. we follow you on social media? Uh, at DJ B O N I C S, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and sometimes you'll catch me on Twitch. It's been a while. Right. Yeah. Catch him on Twitch. Catch him on his new tour. I'm sure you're gonna have a lot of, yep. a lot of Wiz, Instagram Wiz stories yeah, coming out. Yeah, make sure you follow me. It's the uh reunion tour, Wiz and Snoop, Too Short, Warren G, Burner, DJ Drama. And uh we'll come into a city near you. You gonna, oh, yeah. you gonna come or what? Why not? If I'm invited. What if Snoop Dogg and Wiz are like, you got to smoke this? Absolutely. You're going to do it? I had Tommy Chong on my show once, and Tommy Chong had to smoke a, uh, I think it was a six-foot bong on stage at one of Snoop Dogg's festivals. Oh, wow. And he was telling me that story. I'm like, I would have done it too if Snoop's asking me to do it. You didn't smoke with him? Yeah. Tommy Chong, I'm saying? Oh, no. It was a Zoom interview. It was during COVID. Oh, okay. I'm trying to get him at some point wow. out, whether it's LA or here. We'll figure it out. Well, I'm going to have to interview you for uh, when I get my podcast going here. Definitely. Cool. Anything you want, dude. No, we'll I talk about it, anything. Man. Congratulations but, to you, and uh, you, you look good doing it. I see. Thank you. Fake it till you make it. That's right. Uh, but this was episode 737 of the podcast. Guys, remember to comment, like, and subscribe on our YouTube channel at Jack O'Hara TV. Thanks, man. It's cool. easy as that. Is there anything?